Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be video four in our Python tutorial series. So if you missed the first few on installing and setting up Python and PyCharm, initial introductions to variables and getting user inputs, go ahead and check those out if you're not familiar because we will be continuing from where we left off in this video. So for this video, we're creating a basic four function calculator. And what that means is we're going to be taking three user inputs, num1, num2, and operation. And so let's get right into it. Uh, first thing we're going to have is a variable, which we'll call number one. And we are going to have that be an input where we ask the user to enter first number, just like that. And th we want this to be a numerical variable type. So if you remember from past videos, when you want to make sure a variable is going to come in as an integer, you go ahead and use int and then the operation, we're just going to make that an input where we prompt the user to enter operation. And since we need this to be some fairly specific info, let's even give them, you know, plus, minus, multiply, divide. Give them the options for the operation so they know what we're looking for. And then we will make number two just like the first number. It'll be an integer. We'll ask for an input and we will say, enter second number. And you can see already, I get kind of uh, loosey goosey with whether I use one parentheses and two parentheses, they're identical to Python. So it's honestly sort of whichever one I click at the time. Um, so it's not, it's good to be consistent, but I'm also trying to show you can use either of these and it'll be just the same. So right now, if we run this, it shouldn't do anything, but it should take our three prompts and you can actually see we can even enter things that aren't those correct operations in here, but then the code doesn't do anything. So that's what we'll be doing next. We have three variables that are now gathering operator info, but we haven't used it to do anything. And before we haven't done anything conditional where we check what a variable actually is and do specific, specific functionality based off of what was entered. So, that's going to be handled in something called an if statement. And again, if you're familiar with any general coding concepts, this shouldn't be too new to you, but in general, an if statement is going to check that a variable, in this case, our operator, is equal to a specific thing. So first we're gonna handle the addition case. And an important thing to note in Python is you need double equal signs if you're checking equivalency. Single equals sign is going to tell the code you want to set a value to that variable. Double equals sign is a comparison checker. And then if statements as well as for and while loops and things we'll cover in future videos, they need to end, end with a colon so they know where the end of the conditional statement is. And this is our first introduction to indentation in Python. This is very important. When you put code underneath a conditional statement, it goes in by one indentation. So if you were to put another if statement inside of that and then conditions inside that, it's going to be another level of indentation down. That's how visually, that's how Python knows what code is contained in what modules. So for now, if operation is equal to addition, then what we want to do is print the value of number one added to number two. And we're gonna go ahead and take that and we're gonna copy that down as we handle our next condition. If the operation is subtraction, then we're going to do number one minus number two. And this code actually will work and it is valid, but something that's kind of cool you can do inside Python as well is an L if, and this code can only be executed if this code did not run. So for the case of looking for a specific operation, it doesn't make that much sense, but let's say we were checking for a name and we want to say if operation, if name equals Peter, print your name is Peter. We would use an L if your name was Pete, you would print out Pete, but because you wouldn't want to see that Pete was in the name, but not the whole name. That's a little bit of a complicated explanation, but it'll come in handy later. Just something to start thinking about. So we'll go ahead and copy this in two more times. We'll handle the multiplication and division scenarios. 
and we should be able now, I'm sure it'll show up if I made an error. We should be able to now say five plus three. And right there, you can see it gives us eight before finishing the routine. So let's try a few other functions. Let's try nine times two. And it looks like, uh, oh, of course, because I left them all as subtraction when I copied them. Let's go ahead and run nine times two again, because it should not be seven. I'm not great at math, but I knew that one. So there we go, nine times two is 18, but you're gonna notice a few of the issues in our calculator that we can actually go ahead and take care of right here. If you wanna enter a number that's a decimal right now, because obviously we're not always going to be dealing with whole numbers, we get an error because we're saying we expect an integer. So here's our introduction to the second type of Python variable that handles numbers. Rather than the int function, we're going to use what's the float function, meaning floating point decimal value. So we're going to change both of our numbers to floats. And what you'll immediately see is it accepts values like 5.4. We can do addition and we can give it 1.2 and it's going to go ahead and return for us 6.6 quite a few decimal places. I'm actually fascinated at where that five comes from, but that's so the float is what lets you handle things more precise than integers. So we should be able to go ahead and say 5.6. Let's subtract from it uh, 1.9. And there you go. It's it's running math and uh, it's adding some decimals, which is neat. But <laughs> you can see right there we're getting decimal values and then one other limitation that we're going to find is if we say, well, the first number is 56, the operation is, you know, three, and you accidentally put a number in there, we're not handling that anyway. It just thinks it's running the code, but it's also not doing anything. We can actually handle this situation by adding some code up here that says else. And this is saying we've checked and our operation is none of these four things. And we can go ahead and give them a, a conditional that says, operation entered was invalid. So all we're doing here is we're saying, you know what, we checked, it's not addition, multiplication, subtraction, or division. We went through and it's none of those. So that means your operation is invalid. So if we run this now, let's say we want 12 and we want, we accidentally added a name and we want to add it to two. Operation entered was invalid. There you have that right there. And that's pretty cool. We've built a basic calculator that handles four functions as well as lets you know whether or not you've got a valid operator. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll try to clarify anything for you. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you found this content useful and be on the lookout for more tutorials coming soon. Thanks, bye.